There are 111 unique pals in Pal World, ranging from pink Amazon factory workers to dinosaurs with fully automatic missile launchers. And I have 100 days to enslave them all. So after picking between the options of anime face, handsome Squidward, or absolute man, Bro's got some thunder thighs. I woke up on a beach, and I seem to have found myself confused, naked, and afraid. The tree holds the truth. Alright, I'll be the judge of that. So after kind of testing out the controls a bit, and immediately beating a sheep within 3 seconds of spawning, I made my way outside, and I unlocked this first fast travel point, and then some random lady at a campfire insulted the way I smell. But her insult didn't kill me, it made me stronger, as I picked up a stick and immediately hit level 2. Ooh, I just leveled up for grabbing a stick. Bro, this map is insane! I thought this game was gonna be like, kind of small. Anyway, I finally opened my inventory and actually looked at the technology tree. I had to unlock the PAL sphere so I could actually catch them, like a Pokeball. I also checked out the PAL decks, and this is how I'm gonna track if I tame every creature. I did quickly notice though that this game was definitely not optimized for a controller. Every prompt that tells you what button to press is literally just blank. Anyway, it was already nighttime because I was trying to figure out how to play for like 20 minutes, and I decided to set up a campfire so I didn't freeze to death. I then grabbed a rock and some berries by pressing and then after beating up this tree, I used the meat from that lamb ball that I beat up earlier to cook some breakfast for the next day by pressing... So now it's day two, and this tree is flame resistant. Whoa, I just did a backflip. I then decided to waste all the materials that I just farmed, making a pal spear even though I still didn't have a pickaxe. Man's getting roasted. But just like that, I was ready to make my first friend. I then finally got my priorities in order, and I crafted a pickaxe, farmed a bunch of materials, and then I crafted a hatchet. I was still struggling with the controls, by the way. Ow! Why am I holding this man? Can, how do I put him down? Anyway, after I decided to finish being a noob, I decided to go the other way from spawn, because I didn't actually explore over here the first time. There wasn't too much over here, but I did manage to find some bread inside this chest. And by the time I made it back, day two was already turning to night. But somewhere around day three or four, I managed to slow down the days a bit, because they were a bit too short. Whoa! Dude just spawned right next to me while I was reading my survival guide. After getting absolutely jump scared by this dinosaur, I did notice the little red monster symbol next to his name. It means he's way too high of a level for me to fight. Yeah, I got control alt deleted. <laughs> hey, yo, what the and then the dude had the audacity to just fall asleep next to my base. So I decided to make a wooden club and this is the moment that I figured out that your pals can work for you. Slave labor. So after farming a massive amount of materials, I do it again. I built a pal box right next to this cliff right here because this is where I can store all my pals and they can build me a massive plantation. I didn't know this at the time, but apparently all of these little symbols right here show the different capabilities of each pal. So certain ones can like cook things for you, certain ones can plant crops, certain ones can mine trees, all that kind of stuff. So if you can get yourself a good combination of pals, you can have like full automation. You're a wizard, Harry. As I was building, I noticed a wandering merchant that was, well, he was wandering, but I was a bit less interested in what he was selling, and I was more interested in hiring another worker. But then he pulled a cold out on me, and my Lambo rolled in to rescue, so yeah, I wasn't able to try and capture him. I am really curious if you actually can capture humans in this game, though. But anyways, I finished building my base, and even though I didn't allow Lambo in my house, he's still putting in that work. This game is like super glitchy though, and sometimes he won't build inside the house, even when I literally throw him in there. Maybe it's not the game, maybe the dude's just lazy. So now that I'm not homeless, I decided to enslave a chicken, and I was forced to build him a bed because he would become stressed if I didn't. But I don't see any beds out in the wild, so bro is either lying or the dude's been in crippling amounts of intense stress for his entire life. So yeah, after that, I tried to close the door, and I accidentally threw out my last pal sphere because I don't know which button closes the door or which button cancels the pal sphere. Good times. But since the building is kind of scuffed inside the base, I decided to set up a crafting area outside, that way they don't have any more excuses. 
And then to end off my night, I got taunted by this little pink dude, and then the man's just comboed up on me. Unacceptable. So, I decided to enslave him to work for me, you know, as one will do. On day four, after cooking up a nice little breakfast, I pretty much just mass farm materials and started catching duplicates of my lamb ball all day. Because I have to finish all of these quests. Apparently in this game, you get a ton of XP for the first 10 of each pal type you catch, and it's the most efficient way to level up, but we'll see that a bit more later. Anyways, after farming all day, my lamb was getting hungry from all this hard work, so I built him a feed box so he could feed himself, and then I cooked him up a lamb kebab. You what? He ate the whole thing in one bite. As the sun rose on day 5 and I beat a lamb ball into unconsciousness, I was making pretty good progress on my quest, trying to get my base to level 7. But all of a sudden, I remembered that the tutorial dude was actually just chilling up there, and since the merchant is no longer with us, I still want to know what happens if I try to catch a human in a pal sphere. So anyways, I started slashing, and bro did not care. He literally was just taking it, transcending discipline itself. So after I got her low health, after some controller related difficulties, I figured out that you actually can enslave humans in this game, but the chance was only 16%. Regardless, that's kind of wild, I'm not gonna lie. So after taming another land ball, I put the tutorial chick to work at my base and she was completely unfazed, just repeatedly telling me to build my own base while she was working on it. I also started to check out the PAL interface, reading how the skills and passes work, but the land ball was definitely not impressed as he was allegedly upset and not willing to do any tasks, so I tried to make him feel better, but that didn't work, so I went exploring for a bit, I beat up a few of his friends, might have captured one or two. Also, I found this green thing. I, I didn't know what it was at the time, so more on that later. When I made it back to base, literally on two health by the way, I cooked everybody some lunch, which cheered up the lamb ball, but now the pink dude is complaining about bad working conditions. At the time, I didn't really know why this was happening, and I didn't really know how to fix it, so I just tried to make sure that they were fed. And then I set up a berry plantation because I needed it for the base level mission, and I started planting some berries. I was hoping that now my pals would be able to feed themselves, but they actually won't because they don't have the capability to do so. Anyway, I ended off the day unlocking the pal workbench so I can give my pals AK-47s and a logging station so they can infinitely work for me in the mines with infinitely respawning things. Oh, and I also set up a ranch so the sheep can shear themselves. As day 5 turned to day 6, I finally realized that the moon and sun symbol on the bottom here is actually the time of day. I, I thought it was this other thing, but that's actually how hot or cold I am. As all the pals arose from their slumber, they all put in that teamwork and set up the ranch. And while they were doing that, I went out to farm some paldium for more pal spheres. And when I returned, a message popped up saying I was being raped by syndicate thugs whoa what's happening i scrambled to quickly craft some cloth armor to not be naked and a bunch of arrows to fight back but when i equipped the bow bro just started t-posing <laughs> bro are you good it's not much but it's honest work so after that, I walked up the hill and I realized that pink dude has been putting in some work, but then he's just leaving all the items up here. Like, why? At the time, I wasn't, like, aware that the pals all had different capabilities, so I was so confused every time they wouldn't do a task for me, but don't worry, I eventually figured it out. Anyways, now that I have cloth from the ranch, I made a pal workbench, and here you can craft each pal's exclusive equipment. Some have guns, some have saddles to ride them, and some have necklaces to fight by your side. There's a bunch of other crazy stuff too, like a penguin rocket launcher. That table was actually my objective though, so I was able to level up the base and add two more beds, and then I convinced two more sheep to work for me. And apparently the sheep had the audacity to be hungry, even though I'm hungry too, so I cooked up about 10 baked berries, and I gave everybody one berry as their ration for the week. Anyways, I needed food, so I went on a lamb taj. And at the end of day 6, I got the courage to fight one of these scary nighttime guys, and after a bit of noob activity, I actually managed to catch him. Meaning now I have 4 out of 113 pals. At the start of day 7, I placed and unlocked an egg incubator for my base missions. I need to level up again for the crusher, and I'm honestly not even sure where I'm supposed to get eggs for this incubator. But I need it to get my base to level 5. 
I then like kind of looked up and I see this guy named Hookrides lurking on the hill. That's a pretty awesome name, I'm not gonna lie. I definitely want to tame that man, so I started shooting and then I realized that I have no pal spheres. This seems to be a recurring issue for me. So I scramble to start gathering wood, but just as I start crafting, my pals absolutely destroy that man. I don't want to make that mistake again and I'm about to start exploring a lot more, so I decided to start grinding out some spheres and arrows. Before I left though, I had to uh, remove a very unsightly centerpiece from my plantation. And now it was time to start exploring this world, start catching some duplicates to level up, and testing out Daydream. Dude is an absolute menace, by the way. As I made my way down the hill, I finally found this new pal, uh, a little penguin fella, but then he turned me into a snow cone, and my pal sphere just didn't work. So I was forced to delete the little guy, and since I don't have any more spheres, again, I just let Daydream take care of the other one for me. I also found this giant level 30 mammoth and some Mozilla Firefoxes, but I have no spheres because I'm an idiot, so I just grabbed this chest and headed back to base for now. So keep in mind, I was only gone for 20 minutes, but whenever I got back, they all were hungry. My sheep is somehow stressed from working when he literally just grazes in the field all day, and the pink dude has developed an eating disorder from stress, yet literally nothing has gotten done. All the spheres and arrows are are still cute. Anyway, I figured out that you can climb vertical surfaces in this game, and so when I got up there, I realized that the pink dude was slaving away all day on these rocks, but I didn't even ask him to do that. And he should actually be doing the tasks that I need, like crafting my pal spheres. Also, his eating disorder is causing him to eat everyone else's food, and that's why they're all starving. And after incapacitating a couple more land balls, and now I have 9 out of 10 for the XP bonus, I ended off day 7 by taming Hookerties. I, I gave him a left hook to the face. I'm sorry. On day 8, I took another look at my pal deck, and apparently Hookerties and Daydream only come out at night. There's also, like, so many pals left to discover, so I'm pretty excited about that. Anyways, I managed to tame two more Hoots, because, you know, why not? I then sniped this Chinchilla, and I re-downloaded Mozilla Firefox, and then I made it back to this absolute abomination. And, okay, let's be honest, he has a giant health bar, he's level 38. The logical thing is to say, alright, I will come back later. But I was actually considering fighting this guy, but before I could even hit him, dude yeah. just ah, stepped boy, on me. You... Anyways, on the way to my body, I saw that there's some flyers in this game, and I was really curious if you could actually ride them. But I voted that for now, and I tamed this little gumball dude. He literally looks like a plant, so I was assuming he could plant things for me. I don't want to brag, but uh, I was right. And after that, I found this, like, purple reindeer. He was super fast, but I chased him and managed to find him trapped in a corner. For some reason, though, the dude didn't care about me, and he was just beefing with this chicken. And unfortunately, Daydream killed him before I could tame him, so I'm gonna have to find another one of them. But anyway, I had finally tamed everything in the area that I could find that was new anyway. So I kind of headed down to the side over here, and I found a large, damp egg. I was a little bit confused at first, but then I remembered that I have an egg incubator. So after getting the last land ball that I needed for an XP boost, and a couple more chickens, you know, for good measure. I made it back to my base, and I put the large damp egg inside my egg incubator. It said it was going to take 30 minutes, so I'll have to come back for that, but I was pretty excited to see what it would be. So while I was waiting on that, I decided to gather a bunch of materials to build a crusher to level up my base. By the way, these things can turn basic resources like wood and stone to a little bit better resources like rope and pallium. That way you can have a fully automated farm where your pals get the basic stuff and then transfer it rather than you have to go get the advanced stuff yourself. And now that my base is level 6 out of 7 for the tutorial quest, by the way, I decided to uh, reevaluate my roster for the base. I put in Mozilla Firefox, I put in Hookerdies for base defense, and I put in the little gumball dude to plant some crops. And I ended off day 8 by capturing a couple more pals, which finished the quest for taming 30 pals. Honestly, this was an insanely productive day. Oh yeah, I also unlocked some new Ingrams, including a three-shot bow, which is pretty interesting, and I finally put a roof on my house. So at the start of day nine, I checked on my egg. It'll be done about halfway through the day. And I noticed that Mozilla Firefox was actually cooking let that man cook. But anyway, I tried to tame a couple daydreams, but I ran out of spheres again. He followed me back to base, and Hookerdies was just like, join or die. So after that, I hung around the base a little bit, grinding out some new structures. I was actually hanging around here because I was waiting on the egg to hatch. I, I'm a little bit used to arc. I thought I actually needed to be here, but that's not true. But anyways, after just sitting here staring at an egg, the incubation was finally complete, so I pressed to incubate. 
Pen King was born. I just kind of followed this guy around, watching him work, and at the time, I had no idea how insanely good this guy was. You'll see a lot more of him later, though. But anyway, after crafting a three-shot bow, I got raided by two cans that will self-destruct. I started shooting, and then once again I realized I have no pal spheres, so I went and quickly crafted one. But as soon as I went to tame the guy, he exploded. Maybe next time you should lay off the Taco Bell. Anyway, on day 10, I made my way up the hill, and I watched the big sailor dude's insane way of mining. Bro just flexes his massive stomach, and the rock gets so scared that it breaks. I finally decided to grind the materials needed to make one of these stone farms, though. So now they just infinitely mine stone, and I can come pick it up whenever I need it. So anyway, I headed back out, and I tamed one penguin, and I killed another one for pal fluid. I'm not gonna question that, but I need it to make the hot tub. And then after a couple tries, I managed to tame this deer, and at the time, I didn't have a saddle for him, but you can actually ride these guys, and it was huge for my run. I actually needed one more pal fluid though, so I clubbed this penguin. <laughs> Club penguin. I then found this skilled islander, and he gave me a free pal spear, which in my mind meant an invitation to be captured. But as soon as I shot him in the head and tried to pokeball him, criminal activity underway. No, it wasn't assault. It was just an attempt at slavery, I swear. <laughs> Bro, I've got a five-star wanted level. So yeah, while Daydream distracted the cops, I tried to capture this dude about eight times. Man broke free about seven of them, but eventually I did manage to catch him as Daydream was still distracting the cops. Lesson of the day, kids. Never give up. They eventually did manage to kill Daydream, and these dudes chased me to the ends of the earth. Like, I don't even know if it's possible to lose your five-star wanted level. I actually tried to swim off the island, but the dude jumped in the water too, and then I ran out of stamina, and uh, I'm not very good at breathing underwater. It's kind of funny, though, because it literally doesn't matter that they killed me. I still have the citizen in my Pokeball. So I put my deer back at base, and he actually has the capability of farming wood, so I can finally quit farming that stuff myself. Anyway, I made my way back down to get my stuff i unlocked this fast travel point i got my stuff back i found a fire egg and at this point, I have two eggs to hatch, so I headed back to base. I decided to try out the common egg first because it was large, and this thing literally takes an hour. I'm expecting something crazy. And at this point, I was finally getting involved in the PAL workbench. My first equipment was Daydream's necklace, which actually allows him to permanently stay out by my side and like shoot in sync with my bow, which means I can have two PALs out at the same time. It's kind of crazy. So I was checking my analytics the other day, you know, as one will do, and I noticed that 90% of y'all are not subscribed. And so I would just like to say that is kind of wild. And thank you for coming to my TED talk. Anyway, the morning of day 11 was a beautiful sunny day, a great day for all of my uh, workers to enjoy the mines. It is gobbling. I then uh, mustered up the courage to try and tame this flyer, but the dude was so strong that erasing me was just barely an inconvenience for him. I then decided to test out my skilled citizen, but he wasn't very skilled. So then I tried the tutorial girl because she literally has a shotgun, but instead of using it, she just did the same punch animation as the skilled citizen. Missed like eight times in a row. Maybe it's illegal to catch humans because they're so useless that they'll bring down our economy as a whole. Anyways, I tested out Hookerdies and he smited down this Nightwing, so I decided to explore a bit more. And this dude is an absolute savage. We also found this glowing pink dude that's like, very large. And he dropped some pretty insane loot, at least I think it's insane loot, I don't actually know what it is. I then found the Rain Syndicate Tower, which is actually the first boss fight, but I wanted to level up a bit first. So now it's time for an epic encapturement montage. And as the sun set on day 11, I came across a merchant with a bunch of armed guards. I mean, why would he need those? 
So after I sold a few things to him, and I caught the hint not to attack him, I grabbed this green orb, and by the way, you can actually use these to upgrade your capture strength, which I'll figure out in a little bit. So yeah, I managed to venture out about yay far. And on the way home, Hookerdies continued to be a menace to society, eviscerating every pal that got in his path. And when I finally made it back, I had enough pal fluid to build a hot tub so my pals can relax, although this behavior will be discouraged. And then I finally hatched the common egg. Oh, that dude looks crazy. And I started incubating this fire egg, which only took 10 minutes. This is actually depending on their size, not how good they are, but I didn't realize that at the time, so I just assumed he was gonna suck. Anyway, my skilled citizen finally displayed some form of skill and crafted some stuff for a new egg incubator so I can have two eggs hatching at the same time. I then decided to rearrange my pals again. I want to try out some of these new ones that I have and forever send the humans into the void because they're utterly useless. I then turned in my base missions for the level 7 base, and now the base is level 8 with a few new objectives, but more importantly, the tutorial quest now only has a single mission. Kill the boss at Rain's Tower, and I'm definitely going to attempt that soon. At this point, the Scorched Egg was ready to hatch, and it gave me an Arsox, which is basically like Mozilla Firefox, but if he became a man. He's even better at cooking, and he can get wood too. Dude is fire. <laughs> Literally. So as day 12 came to an end and everybody was sleeping soundly after a hard day of work, I found a depresso in the wilderness, so I enslaved him to cure his depression. <sighs> I kind of want to try to fight this guy now. Yeah. What? So after me and Grintail tamed this little life monk dude, who can use a submachine gun by the way, I headed to the boss tower and I found a mega sphere. Ooh, what can I catch with this? And after a bit of contemplation, I reluctantly decided to enter Rain Syndicate Tower. What? Anyways, I'm high enough level now for the high quality workbench, metal tools, life monk submachine gun, and a metal cleaver used for butchering pals? Bro, who would ever want to do that? I am the danger. Back at base, the egg hatched, and I got another pin king, so now I can have this guy for battle and slaving away at my base. Best of both worlds. Also, after I fast traveled over, apparently when you die in a boss fight, your bag just drops outside. That was my main concern going in, so I'm super relieved I actually was able to get my stuff back. And in the middle of the night, I found some thugs with the pal locked up in this cage, and that's just unacceptable. So I locked the thug up to show him how it feels. And then I tried to tame this deer, and I perished. After fast traveling back, I let Daydream distract him while I got my stuff. And I released the cage to set this guy free, and instead he'll be enslaved by... <laughs> Me. I then found Harambe sitting on top of this tree up here, so I captured him in a Pokeball. And that gave me the experience I needed to level up, which gave me Grintail's saddle and a crossbow, which does way more damage than the regular bow. Also, uh, this monkey here, he has an AK-47, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, I found this dungeon called Hillside Caverns. I was a little bit unsure if I was, like, ready for something like this, but I just headed right in. Honestly, this place was super easy. It was basically like the outside, but in a cave. Daydream deleted some thugs that had vitamin D deficiency, and I found a mal. Yeah. I then remembered that I actually had this pen king on my roster, so I threw him out. And the dude literally just turns people into a snow globe and then flexes his chest muscles as he eviscerates all his foes. Man is an absolute legend. Anyway, I'm not going to spend too much longer talking about this cave. I was in it for a very long time, and I came around this treasure chest, which it's honestly not that great, but it, it was alright. And yeah, by the time me and Pen King finally made it out of there, the day was pretty much over. So I unlocked this fast travel point, and then I tried to tame this, like, fire purple dude, but I accidentally undid his existence. 
And at the beginning of day 15, after capturing this elephant, I came across Chillit, which is kind of like an open world boss, just like the mammoth. But this dude was only level 11, so I decided to take him on. And honestly, Pang King is absolutely insane. The dude just 1v1 Chillit, took down almost all of his health without even breaking an icy sweat. And then Daydream finished the man off. I tried to tame him. I'm not sure if you can tame bosses or not but daydream killed him and yeah apparently this is how you unlock ancient technology points which give you special ingrams and then i just died from being on fire i'm not gonna question why chillet's ice shot caused me to burst into flames but i respawned and he didn't what a loser i then came across this tree that had some ornaments on it and what these do is they have a skill in them that you can put on any pal you want kind of like customizing their loadout I also saw this egg across the gap, so I risked my entire life to grab it. And then I finally found another one of those dinosaurs from like day three that did that to me. <laughs> so after Pen King initiated an extinction event on him, I tried to tame him and I failed. And after spending my entire life saving some spheres, I finally contained the dude. When I made it back to base, I evaluated all my new pals and I decided to give Harambe some playing time. Daydream's necklace was also done crafting, so now this guy stays out permanently and I can essentially have two pals at the same time. And not only that, but I'm also level 14 now and I can make mega spheres. There's also this distillation pod that will like combine pals to give them extra power, but I think I need to kill a boss to get another ancient point for that one. Anyways, to end day 15, I hatched the Rocky Egg, and I got an absolute psychopath. Dude's name is literally threatening to hang you. And, and look at the description! Bro, this man needs to be locked up. Uh, moving along, I need metal for these base upgrades, so I started grinding. And then after putting down some storage boxes for maximum efficiency and crafting some better armor, I built a medieval medicine bench and I saw a recipe for suspicious juice that increases mood when consumed apparently. I, I don't really want to know what's in that but if the pals are depressed at least I can keep them working. Anyways, the base is level 9 now and if I can get it to 10 I unlock a slot for a second base. We can start franchising our plantation. <sighs> Seems like a one person job, but all right. I also want to start preparing for that tower boss fight again, so I went ahead and crafted Life Monk's machine gun. That sounds pretty good. So after getting raided and catching this dire wolf, it was finally crafted, and now this little guy owns a firearm. But for now, I can either saddle Grintail or this Megaloceros, and I like the deer's abilities more, so I went with that. Although now I won't be able to have him collecting wood for me, so that is a little bit unfortunate. Bro, why are you in my base? I'm scared. Anyways, I finally got my first mount, so I celebrated by uninstalling Mozilla Firefox. At the time, I was only doing this RAM ability because I didn't know what button to press for the power shot. I explored a bit further, and after witnessing an alpaca beefing with a thug, I came across a little village. These guards took their job very seriously, by the way. I talked to all the citizens, but they were all kind of lame, so I sold my duplicate pals to this merchant, and then I left to explore a bit more throughout the night. I didn't find any new pals, though, and my pals still can't farm metal for some reason, so I grinded that out for a bit to make a spear table and Grintail saddle. I genuinely do not feel safe with this guy in my base. So after interrupting this man's five-course meal, I went to go grab a fast travel point for a skill point, and I found this church that looks identical to Elden Ring. So so apparently this statue lets you use the green orbs to upgrade your capture ability and your pal strength using pal souls. Anyways, I built a cooler box which was the last thing I needed for a level 10 base. So now I can set up a second base in a better location and we can take over every single biome having pal plantations all the way across the realm. I'm gonna take back on Zoe and Grisbolt and this time I am going to capture Grisbolt in my Pokeball. Alright, uh, that definitely could have went better. I need more pals with guns and a better method of staying alive, apparently. But as soon as I said that in game, I realized that there is a shield slot in my inventory, so 
I can craft one. Bro, I should have made this like 10 levels ago. I No wonder I'm dying in two hits. This thing has a thousand durability. I never really explored behind the spawn yet. So I headed down there and I found another dungeon, but I'm pretty sure this is the same one as before. I must have missed the final boss the first time though, which is this little electric porcupine dude. And he was pretty easy to kill and I captured one of his minions. And after heading out of there, I found Penking's grandpa, but he turned me into an iceberg and slid into my DMs until I reached fatality. So I decided to wait on that fight for a while, and in the meantime, I watched two titans have an epic 1v1 to settle their beef, and I got some free loot. And I also got... Death. At the start of day 21, I tested out Grintail, and he's kind of slow, and he's also kind of mid. I did want to explore a bit more though, so I crossed over this creepy bridge, but I wasn't welcome there, and the natives tried to smite me out of existence. The area right before the bridge was super flat and littered with metal rocks though, so I decided to clear out some thugs and set up my second base here. I'm hoping that my pals will actually mine the metal rocks here for me, so I can craft metal items without slaving away for three days each time. But then when I went back to my other base to grab some seeds for the farm, I experienced World War IV breakout. Anyways, on day 22, I unlocked some new stuff, but I need to hit level 17 for a cooking pot, that way my base can level up again. My eggs were finally ready to hatch though, and I got this Olympic swimmer and another deer, which will be perfect for my second base to gather wood. And since Grandface is literally slower than my running, I traded him for Mozilla Firefox, and I crafted a harness so I can use the dude as a flamethrower. After I went back to my other base and I farmed for a little bit, I noticed that Mozilla Firefox's father is upset and won't be doing any tasks. Oh, that's kind of ironic. I happen to be upset, and I'm not going to provide any food. Also, some pals are allegedly stressed from not having a bed, so instead of building one, I decided to use the materials to build a viewing box, and then I put three humans in there so the pals could all see what it's like to be useless. And then after ending off the day by catching a couple duplicates and getting a couple more from hatching eggs. But then on day 23, a bunch of fangirls that can't contain their love threaten my homeland, but then their brains turned off for a minute and they disappeared. And at my second base, my pals were starting to feel neglected. I actually completely forgot about beds when I set this base up because sleep is for the weak. And back at base, I had Lambo craft me a ton of arrows so I could prepare for a boss fight. And while he was doing that, I just stood here perplexed by the fire dude sitting in a tub of water. But now I have 70 arrows, a shield, I'm less trash at the game, and I have some hope. So I headed back to Rain Syndicate Tower, and I held down to join the boss battle. Go. After that massive victory, I stood here on top of the world with five more ancient points in my brain. So back at base, I unlocked the PAL distillation pod, a mega shield, and then I built a statue of power. It took a lot of dudes to hammer in that one nail on the statue's toe, but I was becoming too powerful and my game crashed. So I loaded back up and I immediately got raided by the free PAL alliance. Wait, am I, am I being audited by PETA? Okay, I can see why this game is still in early access. 
So I got pretty lucky because now my plantation didn't get shut down and I'm able to continue operating. And apparently these pal souls are used at the statues, so I upgraded my pen king and deer stats a decent bit. And after teaching my second base to feed itself, I tamed these two Harambes, one for my base and one for his AK-47. Wait a minute, I forgot to try and tam the boss. So I headed back to base to prepare to catch this boss and I actually managed to find and catch this Tombat. So I put him in my base and I headed back to the tower with some mega spheres in my pocket. This fight was super easy this time around because I actually understood his mechanics and I'm over leveled I think. But anyways, when I finally got him low, it said he was immune to spheres and I don't see any cubes, so I just removed him from the premises. There's gotta be a way to tame Grizzbolt though because I have to catch them all before day 100. Maybe he's like a normal pal in one of the harder zones. The rest of day 25 was spent farming fire dudes for their flame organs. Playing an Uno Revice on Pain King's grandpa. And then harvesting more organs from flame dudes and taming a moth guy that may or may not be made from cinnamon. On day 26, I started exploring a bit more, and I found this new pal, he looks kind of like Robin Hood. <gasps> Eventually I made it back to base, and we were getting harassed by like a dinosaur cult. And half of my pals are incapacitated, but I managed to tame one of the degenerates, so I'd say it was a pretty successful day. Also, I, I realized I was using stone tools this entire time because they look identical to the metal ones, and I'm a bit slow. But I grinded some metal after I resolved this issue, which took all night, by the way. But now I have a cooking pot for my base missions, and I went exploring to find some wheat seeds for the other mission. While I was out, I tamed this plant on like a 5% chance somehow. I really need to start getting better spheres. Anyways, I spent like half the day and I didn't find any wheat seeds, but apparently I already had some at base, so that's cool. The next base mission is a weapons workbench, which is literally three levels away. This game is starting to get really grindy. As the day came to an end, I started exploring more towards the east since the north was getting pretty difficult. But after running around a bit, I realized this side wasn't any easier and I went over to the wild west which was a bit more my speed. Anyways, I kind of just spent the entire day exploring for fast travel points and catching duplicates to level up because I'm being a bit limited by my low level at this point. I did manage to find this plague doctor looking guy though. Pro meta? Is that you? Yeah. And I managed to capture him, but even though he looks pretty cool, he's not that great. When I finally made it back to base, I realized my pals weren't even making bread. They were just straight up eating raw wheat like absolute savages. But they're still alive and that's good enough for me. So I headed back to the north area with some green spheres this time. And I managed to tame an off-brand cow. I pinpoint snipe this Kelpsy with a Pokeball. And after a fairly long fight, I also captured this dragon who is going to see a lot of use throughout this video. But for now, I don't have his saddle, so I put him in the base roster and I wanted to test this other flame guy. But before I can do that, I'm gonna have to farm more flame organs to make his saddle. But before testing him out, I headed back to the west because now I have more spheres and I wanted to tame this werewolf guy and he ate up like four of them things. On day 30, I fought a giant scoop of ice cream that had a mustache. He was only level 11, but it was actually kind of difficult because he had aimbot and he hit a lot harder than ice cream should. Bro got melted. And while I was out, I stole a bunch of flame organs from fire foxes and I tamed a couple duplicate dinosaurs to try and get one with a better perk. But eventually I came across this new little rabbit guy. Oops. I don't know why this zone is so easy now, like I was in a hard area three seconds ago. Anyways, I tamed the other rabbit, and then after vertically scaling this wall, I came across two relaxed sauruses. They were relaxing, I assume. And now one of them is relaxing inside of my Pokeball, and the other one is relaxing in the afterlife. And before heading back to my humble abode, I managed to catch a Wooly Pop, whose wool is made from cotton candy, by the way. Wow. So I grabbed this large electric egg and I fast traveled back to my base.
And since I have so many eggs at this point, I decided to set up a third incubator. And I did some chores around the base while waiting on the eggs to hatch. And when they were ready, I hatched a Chillit and a Dazi, which were both brand new pals. And Dazi actually has a necklace just like Daydream, but I'm gonna have to level a little bit first. So for now, I grinded some metal and I crafted Arsox's saddle. He does pretty good damage, but his attacks are super weird to aim and they have like a negative range. So it's honestly kind of pointless, unfortunately. I also want to test the dino saddle out as well, but I need a bunch of leather. So on day 32, I became a menace to society and poached some pals for their leather. But after making it back to base, I was trying to hatch this egg and the game literally wouldn't let me select it. I struggled for a while and then I tried taking out the other eggs to see if that would help, but it actually just reset their timers and I still couldn't grab it. This kind of took me a lot longer than I'm willing to admit. There was probably like a one pixel radius where I could actually select this thing. But after an extended period of time, I finally got a pin king for my second base. And I also had everything for the saddle to finally test out this dinosaur. Bro is rolling into the fourth dimension. All three of this man's attacks are really solid with a nice mixture of short and long cooldowns. I have to say I'm impressed. And since I could tell that he was worth investing in, I decided to use some Pal Souls to increase his stats at the Statue of Power. And as I headed back out, I saw another boss tower from this creepy bridge. I'm not really sure what direction I should be aiming for, to be honest. I did manage to find a merchant though, and bro was monetizing trash. Maybe I'll come back in a few levels and convince them to make a career change. I then unlocked this fast travel point, and I infiltrated PETA's headquarters to free a pal from a cage. Wait a minute, why do the pal protection activists have a pal locked in a cage? Something is not adding up. As the sun rose on day 33, I found this really cool looking Zephyr flying dude and I put a pretty insane amount of effort into lowering his health to catch him. But after wasting a ton of spears and the dude got stuck inside of a wall, I had to give up. I kept exploring though and eventually I grabbed this fire egg and gave these pal activists a concussion. The tail attack is like a massive stun by the way, it is so good. And then after dropping off this cliff, I found a huge dragon egg. Huge dragon egg? Oh boy. I've only seen normal and large eggs before, so this literally could be insane. Then as I was crossing the water, I accidentally picked a fight with a bunch of moths that may or may not be made out of cinnamon. And for some reason, they're insanely overpowered. But after getting my stuff back, I grabbed the fast travel point and found a cave that was a bit ahead of my capabilities, so I headed back home. I'm probably gonna figure out how to achieve world peace before I figure out how to consistently access this incubator. But for some reason, I'm stubborn and I just continued to suffer rather than move it. And then I looked up and somehow Wooly Pop got stuck on the roof. Dude is hungry because he won't come down for dinner. But now I was finally a high enough level for Gigaspheres and a weapons workbench. So I grinded out some metal. My pals are still not grinding metal for me, by the way. I'm not really sure when or how you're supposed to do that. And after hatching a few eggs, getting a new Univolt, I put the huge dragon egg in there and it takes two entire hours. Two hours? Let him cook. And after some rocket science, I hatched the middle egg and got another one of these psychopaths. And after that, I did some home renovation and everybody helped to build the weapons workbench because they were very excited to get guns. But some of them will not be allowed to handle the guns. My base was now level 12 and I was one level away from getting a saddle for my dragon, a musket, and there was also a grappling gun coming soon. So I headed back to the wild west and I started exploring to try to level up. After taming a Kelpsy, I tried to fight this level 17 as a robe boss. Okay, okay. Yeah. Try to pull out the machine gun. It started out pretty well, but then the dude blew some bubbles, and I tried my best to dodge them, but. Oh, no! Oh, I'm so close. 
But then when I respawned at base, there was an army of syndicate thugs breaching my defense, and I kind of just stood there naked and watched while an intergalactic warfare took place on my front lawn. Anyways, I tried the Ezero fight again, and my newly patented strategy of not being trashed this time secured me a victory. But I did mean to tame her, so... Uh, yeah, that's a bit no. unfortunate. So I headed back to base, and I witnessed my sheep dreaming about food in his sleep. Yeah, that's pretty relatable, to be honest. On day 36, I got raided by explosive toucans again, but I managed to catch one this time after he broke free, like, three times in a row. And then I hatched two more eggs, and both gave me new pals with insane farming capabilities. Bro just set the world record for the least amount of time between birth and working on a plantation. Anyways, I need one more leather for my dragon saddle. I crafted the dragon saddle. So now I have my first flyer, and I was a bit disappointed when I started testing him because the dude basically just hovered above the ground and jumped like a land pal. At the time, I thought this meant he couldn't actually fly, but he can, I just didn't figure it out yet. His ranged attacks are kind of insane though, they're fast and easy to aim, he's really the perfect mount, assuming I figure out how to fly. Anyways, I really need to figure out where the next boss tower is because I'm assuming I'm getting close to a high enough level. So I fast travel to the east coast again since I haven't explored much over there. This dragon is a syndicate thug's worst nightmare. And as I was exploring, I tamed another off-brand Mozilla Firefox and this is a different one. And I noticed that I could see the tower in the distance. It looks way closer than the one by the bridge, so yeah, I'm gonna try and go there. Oh yeah, I also figured out how to fly by holding down jump. The stamina is kind of horrible, but this opens up a ton of opportunity when it comes to exploring. I then found some bees, and I accidentally threw my Giga Spear at him while at full health, but I somehow got the tame, so that's cool. But then the other one somehow managed to kill me while he was encapsulated in a sphere. What? On day 37, I continued east and I found this giant skeleton with an egg inside it. I also casually flew over a level 45 water monster and became slightly scared. That is insane. This area has a lot of stuff in the level 20 range though. It's definitely where I'm supposed to be right now. My dino also learned this new seed bomb ability, but it was actually worse than just not attacking at all, so I switched it back. And I found a few new pals here. I caught them all. And I flew around a bit trying to explore this volcano. And I eventually came across this fire dude. I had to call in Pan King for backup, but instead of helping me, he just jumped in the lava and died. And as I was catching the dude in the spear, Pan King ascended into the afterlife. I'm really sorry, buddy. I also found this Megapithecus, and I tried to tame him, but he tamed me instead. And it took me forever to get back over there. I really need a fast travel point. So after getting my stuff back, I avoided conflict for a while until I found one, right next to a level 35 boss fight, by the way. And then I found this green egg, which I'm pretty sure I've never seen before, so that could be a new guy. Anyways, I started heading straight towards the tower, and I found myself in the snow. It was cold. And it wasn't too bad at first, but eventually it got to the point where I was rapidly dying. But I did manage to heal up a bit, and then rush in to grab this fast travel point. So now I can teleport right to the boss's front porch. So apparently I died while fast traveling, but my bag is at my base, so I guess my dead body just went on a road trip or something. It was finally time to hatch the huge dragon egg though, and I was really excited. I already have this dude. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. But I taught two of my other guys some new skills. And then I crafted some green Pokeballs, a lifetime supply of arrows, and a grappling gun. And then I tested out my dragon's new fire breath as he sent things into the shadow realm, but mainly because I needed to farm leather for cold resistant pelt armor for that snow tower. And I almost managed to tame the monkey this time, but after breaking free twice, he tamed me again. After taking my frustrations out on these two cans, I headed back to base, but then I immediately got raided by an exorbitant amount of syndicate thugs. Luckily, my B self-destructed and did 999999 damage. Well, that was kind of overpowered, but okay. Anyways, I finally had some leather now, so I crafted my blueprint for ramshackle pelt armor. Don't worry, my shoulders won't get cold. And then I tested out this grappling gun. The thing is super fun to use. I finally had some more ingots now, so I crafted Harambe's assault rifle 
cool since life monks is so good and then i got all of my pals gear ready to take down the boss at the east tower I didn't even realize it, but even though I had pelt armor on, I almost instantly died from the cold. At the time, I was extremely confused, but nighttime does make it colder, and I also could have used a torch. I didn't think about that. So, I just kind of moved on and decided to test out Harambe's assault rifle. Bro has reverse accuracy, so he just decided to call lightning from the sky instead. I then fought the boss, Grintail, and dodged every attack before encasing him in a miniature spear. I also tested out Dazi, and all her abilities seem pretty overpowered, so I'm gonna make her necklace to replace Daydream pretty soon. But first, I entered this dungeon to fight the Catris boss. It was pretty intense, and it took multiple Gigaspheres, but I walked away with her in my pocket. Hot I was feeling pretty good at this point, so I tried to fight the Bushy boss as well. It was going great at first, but the dude is a literal ninja and he kept teleporting away from Pen King to assassinate me. I tried to fight again, and to be honest, I probably should have died, but since he tried to cheese me, I cheesed him by shooting him in his hat while he was stuck on a wall until he perished. And I finished off day 40 by grinding some metal for Dazi's necklace and hatching some eggs, but they all gave me duplicates. On day 41, I checked out Catrus, and I realized that the bosses stayed big after taming. I was expecting her to like shrink back to normal size, but honestly that's really cool, and I wish I would have captured more bosses, I've been killing things that are duplicate. Also, I realized that I can have Dazi and Daydream out with their necklaces at the same time. That could be huge for boss fights. Also, I fought the King Alpaca. He had some pretty heavy hitting abilities, but Pen King just froze the man every time he tried to move, and then I enslaved him in a Giga Spear. <gasps> this dude's skills are insane, by the way. His Kingly Slam has 100 power, which is like the highest I've seen, outside of self destruct abilities, of course. And right after I read those abilities' description, we got raided, and he instantly showcased it by belly flopping on some thugs to defend my honor. I need leather for his saddle though, and I'm not sure why I'm always out of leather, if there's a way to automate it, but at least it isn't that difficult to grind. And eventually I made it to this ledge, but my dragon was incapacitated, so I tried to fly across and grapple combo up there. It didn't work. And I tried to climb out of the water, but my stamina is awful, and I accidentally let my dino drown. Sorry, buddy. Oh no! That <laughs> dude just drowned. Anyways, I made it back to base and hatched three frozen eggs and got three new pals. Two of them have insane farming stats and Wumpo is literally massive. So I built two luxury pal beds to level up my base. And for the next level, I need an assembly line and a generator. We're about to move to 21st century slave labor. Hmm. Bro, there is no way that tree is still standing right now. So as Wumpo was logging away in the mines, I explored a bit more to catch some duplicates and level up. Yeah. Oh. And after grabbing myself a scoop of ice cream and getting worse trade-in value than GameStop from this merchant, I 
I continued power leveling for a bit until I came across this Broncherry boss. And I feel like this fight should have been difficult, but the dude just chased me in a circle and he doesn't have any range, so I came out unscathed. No, I'm actually an idiot. Anyways, I caught a few more duplicates. And then I flew over to the Obsidian Mountain on the west side of the map. It's super hot here though, so I could only really explore around the beaches. But I still managed to get a bunch of eggs, a fast travel point, and experience true architecture at its finest. I then noticed that the locals were literally almost level 40, and I got a little bit scared. So I grabbed the eggs and green orb from these pillars in the water, and I headed back across to the bamboo forest. And this is a spot where I got quickscoped by, uh... Well, honestly, I don't even know what happened here, but I'm dead now. Anyways, I was pretty deep into exploring these Northwest Islands, and I decided to try this boss fight against Felbat. This guy was pretty easy to take down, especially with the help of the Alpaca King. But then whenever I got him low, I ran into a skill issue and failed to catch him, and he caught me lacking. What? Bro... So I tried again when I got him low, broke free from like 5 gigaspheres. The odds of it failing this many times in a row is just my luck I guess. And eventually he eliminated my presence, but after I died he became dinosaur breakfast. So I guess that works. Anyways, on day 46 I found another ruined church and that was a perfect spot to end my journey and head home. And after using all of my IQ points to find this singular pixel to hatch this egg, we got raided by some syndicate sociopaths. And even though Pen King got dismantled, he needs some milk. I now had everything I needed to make a King Pack a saddle. Bro is built like a planet. I had to check up on my other base, but when I got there, Wumpo was just chilling inside the human exhibit. Be careful, buddy. There's degenerates in there. I decided to unlock a makeshift handgun and some heat-resistant metal armor for the Mount Obsidian area. And then I decided to try and fight this mammoth. It's not the boss mammoth, but it actually was super easy because the dude couldn't reach me. The capture chance on the spear was only like 2% though, so I ended up putting him out of his misery. I'm assuming I need better spheres for that. This game is starting to get super grindy though. So honestly, I just need to mass produce spheres and then catch a bunch of duplicates because that seems like the most efficient method to level up right now. I also decided to switch Wooly Pop for a B because he literally just produces cotton candy. I don't even know what kind of Willy Wonka related activities I was planning when I put the dude in the roster, but he's definitely seen his last ray of sunlight for the decade. Anyways, I went back to the swamp because there's some new stuff in there and I tried to tame a shark, but I accidentally kept killing them and then one decided to pull out the bubble blower in Nader 3000 and he evaporated me off the planet. <sighs> he killed me <laughs> with a bubble. So I used all of my life savings to craft 17 gigaspheres and then used one to enslave my bubble blowing mortal enemy and that marks unpaid worker number 70. I actually do have the majority of the pals at this point, I just need to level up to get those higher zones for the rest. I then tried to tame this bee, but instead I became the first plantation owner to walk on the moon. Ah! No! Stop! Help! <laughs> Bro! And the next guy that I tamed was this panda guy. It was pretty easy, but took a couple tries. This is definitely not somebody to just skim over though, because he has an actual rocket launcher, and I use him a lot later in this video, so you'll see that. And I finished off day 47 by taming Queen Elizabeth while a Grintail tried to commit a felony against me. And on day 48, I found my dinosaur's yellow cousin locked up by PETA. So I locked them in the afterlife and I set this dude free. I definitely want to try this guy out because he's like an electro version of my dino, but the saddle's a lot higher level so I kind of have to wait on that. I also found this huge green egg, but I'm not going to get my hopes up after what happened with that dragon one. So I caught a few duplicates, and then I forgot this game can't be paused. So I wasted like half a day while talking to my friend. So, yeah. When I came back though, I tamed this Zephyr guy in the middle of the night, and that was pretty cool. So I guess it was worth standing here for 20 minutes. So the map is starting to fill out really well at this point, and after hatching two brand new pals from these eggs, I started incubating the huge green one which will take over an hour. I checked my ingrams and I noticed that I can get Massandra's rocket launcher which is also a saddle, and there's no possibility in this world that I'm not grinding for that rocket launcher. So I went to my other base to steal some metal, but it was kinda heavy so I had to slowly waddle back to my base. 
It took a couple of trips. Everything costs metal in this game, and I am kind of broke. But I proceeded to spend all of it on this metal chest because I wanted to reorganize. And after crafting a better shield, day 50 began. I finally made some metal armor now that I've been farming metal myself. I can't wait until my unpaid workers actually do some work around here. Anyways, I hatched two snow eggs, and I got tames number 77 and 78. And I was feeling a bit crazy today as well, so I decided to fight a level 28 piece of grass. But then whenever I got her low, the spear broke, I still don't have any cubes, and I got shot through a wall. Good times. I fought her again though, and to be honest, she really didn't have much of a chance because I was just going to keep coming back over and over again. And then whenever I finally beat her, I would just claim I did it first try. But that wouldn't be necessary though because King Paka exists. And after that, I must have woke up on the indestructible side of the bed today because I decided to fight the mammoth boss. And it was a solid 10 minute not epic fight. It was very boring. And yeah, this dude is way tankier than the other mammoths and I got humbled. I probably could beat this dude if I tried again, but it just takes so long and I can just come back later. Hopefully I can level my base up again soon though because I have a really good idea for farming metal and it's still my bottleneck, but you will definitely get to see that later. Apparently my pals are injured, depressed, weak, starving but i still don't have any osha violations so i headed back out and i tamed a few duplicates for xp as well as the mustache ice cream guy because i only enslaved his minions before and then i decided to fight this wyvern boss i tested out my yellow dino in there and he definitely looks pretty good but pen king was once again the mvp as he's strong against dragon types which is why his damage numbers are red. It kind of took me a while to fully understand the system, but it actually is a massive advantage. After that, I tried to tame this mud whale dude like eight times, but he robbed me of all my spheres. So when I found this new turtle guy, I had nothing left. By the way, those turtles are absolutely goaded for metal farming. So when you see me complaining about metal, just know I eventually figure it out. And as nighttime approached, I managed to find three more spheres on the beach, and I used one to enslave this random furry. And then I got Bowser the metal farming beast as well. This area was starting to get super hot though, so after freeing this ice mal and instead putting him into slavery, I went back to fight this nightwing boss, and bro got melted. And for good measure, I gave this mud guy the same treatment. I explored a bit more around here, and I think the reason everything is super low level on these outer islands is because the game is supposed to be getting updates for online PvP servers, and I'm assuming these will be alternate spawn points. PvP on this game sounds crazy. But after exploring all around these outer island areas, I headed back to my hometown, and when I hatched the huge green egg, I got another Queen Elizabeth and a couple more duplicates, but before I could eat even be disappointed. We got assaulted by a herd of ex-convicts, and while getting brutally attacked, I just stood there with a spear in hand, ready to recruit some new employees. But I was all out of good spears, and I had to use the blue ones, and it failed like every single time, so I had to ensure he wouldn't be applying for any more positions. I did level up from that though, and I unlocked hyper spheres, but I need an assembly line for them, which costs 100 ingots, and needs a power generator, which costs another 50. Why don't you just take my firstborn child while you're at it, Power World? So after getting these slackers unstuck from the wall, I threw out the wyvern boss, and this guy's saddle unlocks at level 36. When I get there, this might become my main mount. Dude looks insane. Also, uh, Dinosum is extremely unhealthy due to neglect. So sad. <laughs> So anyways, I left the base, and as my wyvern and I were farming some metal, some syndicate weirdos had the audacity to raid my base literally in the middle of the night. Like, come on, man, have some respect. And after that interruption, I got back to grinding away in the mines, and I eventually had enough metal to watch the power of teamwork build a power generator. I probably should build this essence condenser as well to strengthen my pals, but everything costs metal right now, so I kind of have to prioritize. So yeah, the generator was generating, and I kept grinding metal for a while. Eventually, this huge dark egg was ready, though. 
which actually came out to a new pal, uh, Felbat. And now I have 84 pal. And I crafted a bunch more Gigaspheres because I want one of those panda bears that doesn't have a minus 10% defense perk. On day 54, I put in a cow for milk and I put this ice moth in for high quality cloth from the ranch. I also noticed that Pen King has a broken leg, so I gave him some medical supplies and the dude ate my entire first aid kit and got miraculously healed. The giant moth dude also keeps my food frozen, so that's pretty cool. And now that everything is sorted at base, I headed to the bamboo forest and I found a new Missandra. It did take me like five gigaspheres, but eventually I contained this beast. And now I need more ingots for his saddle. What a surprise. So I steamrolled some raiders and beat up some metal rocks with a pickaxe. And I had the idea to try and buy some metal from a merchant, but when I arrived in the town and checked his offers, yeah, I don't think anything here can even qualify as mid, to be honest. And then after killing Perry the Platypus's glow-in-the-dark uncle, I spent the rest of the day farming a bunch of metal. This guy better be worth it. On day 55, I hatched a new fire guy while I waited on Bushy to cook some metal. Let him cook. And after unlocking a gear sphere and a production assembly line, I finally had a rocket launcher for a panda bear. And as we ran around the land, some syndicate thugs volunteered to be test on us. <laughs> yeah, he was worth it. And his other attacks aren't even bad either, and he's actually pretty fast. This <laughs> dude does not miss. Wait, he can fly too? Man is winding up on that gumball. So yeah, I went back to base and I put like all my souls into this dude's upgrades. I also swapped the boulder throw for this vine ability since plant type attacks are kind of his loadout style. Anyways, I finished up the day by smiting down some nuisances, farming more metal, and evaluating how many more pals I need to find for this challenge. At this point in the run, I actually looked more in depth at the future Ingrams and I realized there was no metal farm in the game at all. I wish I would have seen this sooner, but now I know I need to set up a base dedicated to it and I'm going to focus on base levels as much as I can. So on day 56, I fast traveled to Hypocrite's Hill to fight this dragon dude and just as I suspected, the dude was being a hypocrite so I gunned him down with a rocket launcher. It's actually kind of insane how the rocket launcher just stun locks anything regardless of its Size. But once the man recovered from his multiple concussions, Pain King froze him a few times. And then after that, the dude noticed that I exist, and then he instantly reverted to my existence. So I want to go to the snow for that tower boss, but the pelt armor isn't warm enough, so I decided to craft some cold resistant metal armor and maybe try that. But then whenever I arrived, I was still freezing. I assumed I was doing something wrong because the area isn't even that high of a level and I spent the rest of the night trying to figure it out. So on day 57, I made a hip lantern and a torch. Oh, I'm not cold. Oh, let's go. Oh, it's probably because it was nighttime. I didn't think of that. So I headed over to the Free Alliance Tower to start the boss fight. <gasps> I deceased. Dude, okay, that ability is horrible. It doesn't even let me move when I use it. Yeah, she's pretty strong, so <laughs> for now, I just explored the snow, killed a couple of reindeer, and I tamed one. And then I managed to catch this Mozilla cold fox. Why is there a fire egg in the snow? That baby has frostbite right now. Anyways, there wasn't really anything else here, so I just headed back to grind some more metal. And this time, I put dig toys into my roster and stole some metal from my other base to craft his headband. Some games are a pay to win, but this game is spin to win, I guess, because this dude is actually cracked. I also decided to bring him to the church area because there's like eight metal rocks all in one spot here, and the dude cleared them out in like 30 seconds flat. That was the fastest 85 ingots I've ever farmed, and I feel like I'm seeing the world for the first time right now. So yeah, after farming a bit more, I set up a platform for this massive assembly line. 
I know it doesn't look great, but I literally have no room. This was a pretty terrible base location in hindsight, but I'm kind of stuck with it at this point. The hyperspheres also take cement, so I decided to mass produce some of those. And now I was finally able to upgrade my base to level 14. Only one more level for a third base location. So I queued up 25 hyperspheres, and for the rest of the day, I farmed some more metal using my new best friend. And for some reason, they literally would not prioritize spheres, so I put in this werewolf guy that has no other talents. And I actually forgot to record for like 10 minutes, but trust me, they were refusing to work, but now that they're on camera, they're pretending to be productive members of society. But now, I had a ton of hyperspheres, and it was time to level up a bit and take down some of these bosses. So yeah, that was a pretty productive five days. And when I made it back to base, well, there was a giant electricity source just casually sitting in my hot tub. It's probably not safe. And after hatching three more eggs from my incubators, I also went back and redid the Azerobe fight because that's the only boss I've done that I didn't actually hmm. catch yet. Azerobe marks pal number 96. But while I was out, I continued up to the north to explore a bit, and this metal structure looking area had some fairly high level stuff, so I didn't even try to fight him. But I did see a boss tower in the far north snow. I'm assuming that's one of the final ones for the game. Anyways, after unlocking this fast travel point in the start of the desert, I spent the rest of the day farming metal. On day 67, I hatched a Nox, which somehow I didn't already have, and I spent most of the day just trying to level up my base. And one of the missions was to set up a beach vacation for my pals. They sprinted over instantly to come build the thing. Oh, they're excited to come build this, huh? Wish you guys were that enthusiastic about working. It took them two days to start producing my spheres when I queued them up last time. I also set up a weapons assembly line to mass produce illegal firearms for my pals. Yeah, there was a lot of metal farming during the day, but I think you've seen me kill enough rocks, so I'm just gonna start skipping that from now on. Bro looks like he hasn't eaten in four years. And now that I was a bit less broke, I decided to craft heat-resistant metal armor and head to the West Volcano area. And when I got there, I found this Pyron, and despite being a little bit under-leveled from this area, I did manage to hire him for my... factory. So I explored a bit around Mount Obsidian, and then I found this level 49 boss and almost had a heart attack. And I did pretty much spend the entire day here, but I found another boss tower that would probably disintegrate me in one hit. And after grabbing an excessive amount of scorched eggs, I headed down the other side of the volcano, and I found this Anubis statue that could be a pretty cool base spot. But for now though, I still need my next base to be dedicated to metal, and after searching far and wide, I found somewhere that's even better than the ruined church. So I cleared some nuisances off of my lawn, and I will admit this area is not exactly flat, but it has a ton of metal nodes and coal nodes, which I'm gonna need very soon as well for refined ingots and carbon fiber. So yeah, essentially, I just added a bunch of high-level mining stat pals, and I set up a furnace because if I smelt here, it'll pull all the raw ore from the entire base and then I'll have it cooked right next to the fast travel terminal for transport. I also made sure to have a bunch of storage boxes scattered around the metal deposits, that way everybody can just pick up their iron ore and stick it right in the box. Did that man just lick the metal rock? I also set up a little area over here for all of their beds, and I put in some pals for transporting the metal and for planting, watering, and harvesting food to feed everyone. I can finally stop complaining about metal now. I needed to make sure that everybody was fed though, so I set up a tomato farm because these gentlemen deserve better than berries. The Bronto wouldn't get out of my way though, so I disposed of him, and I set up a berry plot as well. And then I went down and manhandled the guy as I lugged his massive body up these rocks. And as a final touch, I set up a second furnace and put in another fire pal for maximum efficiency. And while my automation automated, I went back to the lava and I tamed this pirate knocked after he ate like 136 of my spears. 
and then I continued exploring a bit. I'm not sure how much of the exploring you guys want to see because it might be repetitive if you've played this game before, but for me, exploration is always one of the best parts of a new game, so I spent a lot of time just trying to see the world fully. The intro to this game says the tree holds the truth, and I'm pretty close to the tree right now, so I decided to just go for it and start swimming right across the ocean, hoping to find the truth. But instead of finding the truth, I found this little island, and apparently it's a PAL sanctuary. There was like five different PALs here that I've never seen before, but they're super high level, and there's also some high level security guards here. So I'm assuming catching these PALs is considered criminal activity. I guess that makes sense because it's a sanctuary. But then I got a little too close and I almost got cremated so I evacuated the area. And then I spent a solid 15 minutes just flying north. I was expecting the game to have some sort of barrier or something but the ocean just kept going and going and my map kept expanding so I was starting to get kind of excited. And then I hit the barrier. Yep, I just got scammed. So I headed over to the snow because it was the only land that was anywhere near me. And I found this Eskimo psychopath, and I only had a normal psychopath at my base, so I tried to recruit him. I died. I don't even know what to say, honestly. This was not one of my brightest moments. It was a pretty fun 20-minute flight, though. So I found pretty much every pal in the game at this point. I just need better spheres to actually catch them all. And after hatching a couple eggs and queuing up this huge fire one, I headed down to the South Sanctuary because I saw it before, but I didn't realize that I could actually go there. And this one didn't have any security guards like the other one. I already had all of the pals here though, except for this earth version of the deer, so I enslaved him. Yeah. And I was still exploring the map a lot at this point, but this time I was making my way through the northeast desert. There was a bunch of new pals here, and I managed to tame this Greyhound, but then I ran out of spheres pretty quick after that. I also found this level 38 cave and this desert village, but there wasn't too much of interest in there. I also tamed this Serpent Terra, but I guess now he's just a surf. And before heading back to base, I managed to find this boss tower, and this one says PIDF Tower. Wait, am I gonna have a boss fight with the cops? But yeah, this map is actually massive but these upper zones in the snow desert and the volcano are just kind of a whole lot of nothing to be honest but after i made it back to base i made some more spheres and i hatched a ragnahawk and right before kiting some raiders into my pool i proceeded to fire rockets at point blank i evaluated my pal deck which had 104 pals captured and the only ones i really need are these at the very bottom here so i started getting ready for the tower boss in the snow again I swapped some of my roster and I crafted a mammoth saddle and an electric polar bear's rocket launcher. And what better way to test these guys out than a literal boss fight? Apparently she's the Free Pal Alliance founder, yet she's riding on a pal. Someone needs to send her to Hypocrite Hill. That fight took a really long time and I feel like I was still a bit under leveled or maybe they're just meant to be really difficult, I'm not sure. But it does seem a little bit absurdly difficult to level up in this game. Anyways, I spent almost all of day 76 exploring around the beaches of the volcano where I caught two brand new pals. He prefers raw meat, but it always ends up eating well done meat. <laughs> That's so sad. That was the worst hmm. spear throw of all time. 
And then I ended off the night by wasting like 12 hyperspheres on this blaze how knock and he still refused to be tamed. But then when I got back to base, I immediately hatched the exact same pal that I just failed to catch. That is a wild swing of luck. Like what are the chances of that? So that marks pal number 108. And I really was starting to unlock a lot of the better pal equipment, but I just needed to get a better setup going to actually craft the stuff. Two bros chilling in a hot tub, not five feet apart. And then I spent the rest of day 77 and the majority of day 78 channeling my inner Dora the Explorer and catching some duplicates. And at this point, I had like two storage boxes full of eggs. Fairly excellent selection, if you will. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! So I set up three more incubators and I social distanced them six feet apart this time. <laughs> I finally decided to try out this PAL condenser to increase my PAL's base stats. It's kind of like going to the gym, but at the expense of absorbing the essence of all your friends. I then hatched a new Kitsune PAL, and I set up a refined ingot forge at the metal base so I could level up my base and start making Ultra Spheres. On day 81, my Van Worm became stronger by absorbing his co-workers. And then I micromanaged the metal branch of the company for a while to try and make my wyvern saddle. Wow. This dude is very big. On day 82, I was exploring the desert a bit and I wanted to try and tame yeah. this Suzaku, but then he ran away. Why are you running? Why are you running? But after looking around a while, I finally found another one and I got him as close to the afterlife as possible without him actually dying. But even hyperspheres were still only like a 2-10% to 10 chance, and he inhaled all 8 of them. So yeah, uh, my boy Pang King put him down. And then after getting stuck on a tree, and using weapons of mass destruction inside of my house, I set up this production assembly line in a very aesthetically unpleasing location. And after crafting myself a Giga Shield, I needed to get the materials for a better Spear Factor. On day 84, I hatched this Robin Hood Terra guy, and that marks tame number 110. Anyways, I headed back to the South Sanctuary and proceeded to commit war crimes as I got duplicates yeah. of Azurobe and Pain King. But at this point, my hyperspheres were a bit outdated, so I headed over to the snow to farm some crystal while this fine gentleman watched me from a distance. And while my spheres were being manufactured, I started heading towards the North Sanctuary, and then I saw this bodybuilding thug. What is that? Dude had a death machine and appeared to have beef with some random rock. What are you even shooting at? When I made it to the sanctuary, I found this shadow beak guy who murdered my mammoth in cold blood. And after seeing that, you'd think that I would run. But instead, I tried to keep lowering his health until he decided to use his laser abilities and wiped my existence from all the history books. There's a ton of these really cool pals in that sanctuary, but it's pretty obvious that I'm lacking a bit in everything. So I headed back to the south sanctuary where it's a bit more friendly. And I managed to tame myself a piece of lettuce. Yeah. Also, apparently they updated the game and my buttons actually show up now. But now the sphere cancel prompt is in Japanese. Yeah. Or maybe that's Korean. Sorry, I don't know. I'm not very cultured. But anyways, uh, I was getting pretty tired of being such a low level. And it's time to make a change. For real this time. It's time to stop.
So I'm level 49 now. Yeah, that was the most productive 10 days of my life. Anyways, I headed to the West Sanctuary and tamed this Jormantide Ignis fellow yeah. by feeding him some rocket-propelled grenades and preventing his nine different spherical prison escapes. But as the sun began to rise, this Valeris spawned and I went in for round three. <laughs> it's about time I tame one of these guys. And then I decided to try and fight this Jormantide boss, but long story short, I drowned on the land. I really want to try this Relaxaurus missile launcher so I can kick back and relax while raining explosives on my enemies. But it's going to require a lot of grinding for that. And before I can do anything, I need to set up an electric furnace to smelt pal ingots for the best spheres in the game. Why? So after farming some more crystal, on day 95, I accidentally killed a scorpion and two lilines because of my fire damage. So I switched my focus and in the meantime, I farmed some high quality pal oil from these mammoths because it's required for the spear factory. Oh wait, they, they changed it from pal fluid to pal oil. Yeah, that's probably a good change. And since I was already nearby, I decided to check out the South Sanctuary and I found a Grizzbolt. Ooh. Its personality undergoes a drastic change when wielding a minigun. Yeah, mine too. I'm pretty sure that nothing else spawns at this south one that I don't already have. It's mainly just RNG for that northeast one at this point, and then a couple more level 50 bosses. So on day 96, I caught a plate of broccoli, and now I officially have 118 pals. I also managed to tame this Shadow Beak, who I definitely want to craft a saddle for. And I also tried to tame this Astagon again, but after escaping my spear, he chose death. It was super unfortunate though, because it could be a really long time before I get this guy to spawn again. So yeah, I just started, um, genocide. And I just kept circling around the entire sanctuary, trying to force respawns. And eventually, I found this new Berserk guy, and I got him, but at what cost? So yeah, I spent the rest of the day forcing respawns, but I didn't find anything else. I only have a few left at this point, though, and I'm definitely a bit worried about the level 50 bosses. On day 97, I gunned down some thugs and checked out some of the new PAL equipment that I could make. I'll probably go for Grizzbolt's minigun next because it's really not that expensive. I then went ahead and did the Ice Moth hmm. boss and the Verdash boss fights. I already have both of them, so I wasn't worried about a specific circular object at that time. When I fought Jormantide, though, I was very focused on said spherical object. And when I finally got him low, he kept breaking free, and I barely caught him with only one Pokeball to spare. And this base version of Jormantide marks tame number 121. I was still spawn trapping this mammoth guy for his oil at the start of every day, by the way. I need so much oil to make polymer for these legendary pal equipments, it's kind of insane. I also finally had the resources for an electric furnace. So I helped the psychopath and Catrice build my electric furnace while she used some kind of witchcraft to control her hammer. And while I was waiting on some pal ingots to smelt, I went back to the sanctuary and I found this hothead, so I extinguished him inside of a sphere. These ingots take way longer than the other ones, but I was able to make six legendary spheres by the time I got back. And then I decided to try and take on this level 47 Anubis boss, because I haven't seen him in the sanctuary. I was keeping up pretty well with his attacks and putting out pretty consistent damage. But he does have this one ability that just instantly one-shots me right off the back of my pal. I tried again, but avoiding this for over 10 minutes straight is kind of impossible since I get stunlocked while using bigger abilities. I feel like I'm playing Elden Ring all over again right now. <sighs> Bro, like how is this even fair? But anyways, day 100 was quickly coming to an end, and I still have a few pals to go, so technically I did fail the challenge. But this is the first time I've ever played this game, and I didn't read any guides at all. I also played the game on the super slow base rates, which I don't think many people do. But I think I can finish in the next 10 days or so, so my new goal is day 110. So after the Mammoth's daily immolation, I crafted Grizzbolt's minigun, and I decided to go test it out on Anubis. But first, I decided to rob his chest while he wasn't looking. Mance was keeping all three bread to himself. 
Okay, bro, this minigun is horrible. I get that they want to reduce the damage to bosses with these weapons, but making them completely useless is kind of dumb, in my opinion. Even the rocket launcher, most of the time, barely does anything to bosses. It just knocks them back like 8,000 foot as they take two damage. Anubis is weak to grass types, though, so my mammoth hits pretty hard. But he has insane wind-ups on these attacks, and it basically guarantees that I'm going to get hit by his WWE suplex. Oh, no! I had him down to like 5%. On day 102, I did this desert cave, and it was really easy. I encapsulated this pirate knocked boss, but there was nothing new in there. And after that, I fought the scorpion boss, which was much easier than Anubis, and I secured me pound number 123. On day 103, I made some more refined ingots to craft a ramshackle refined helmet and repair my refined armor. It's kind of insane how fast armor breaks for it to cost over 50 ingots to repair almost daily. But with full armor, I took on Anubis again. And understanding his mechanics, along with being able to absorb one hit from that suplex ability, I managed to put him inside of a circle. I know for sure that the Astagon dude is in the sanctuary, so I headed back over there, and I spent all night circling around and committing criminal activities, but to no avail. And meanwhile, at my metal base, all of my pals were at war with nobody yep. yeah they were like glitched mm. or something so none of them would work and they just kept inhaling every ounce of food i tried fast traveling and even resetting my game but nothing would fix it so i just went back to the sanctuary <gasps> and after circling around a few times i finally found this man and with astagon mm. tamed that now marks 125 employees of my company but when i made it back to my metal base all of my pals were still at war with literally nobody while they were sleeping by by the way so i tried to fast travel again and i tried taking them all out of the base i tried resetting again nothing would work i really need pal ingots for these bosses though so i decided to google it and reddit said to build this bell which actually seemed to fix the problem and it didn't take long at all before my pals resumed their employment and after a bit of grinding i ended off the day by making some more legendary spears and crafting a shadow beak saddle this dude's abilities look absolutely insane but he is a dark type meaning he's not going to be strong to any of the bosses unfortunately but regardless now i only need to fight frost stallion and these three blank spots which i've already found on my map and it's the jet dragon and the double boss in the desert all level 50 bosses by the way but I wanted to start with Frost Stallion because he's strong to the Jet Dragon, which would make things so much easier. But I don't think my current method will work because almost all of his attacks damage me directly. So my new plan was to make a gun or maybe even some rockets so I could fight him from a distance while my pals distracted him up close. I was somehow out of technology points though, so I went and unlocked a couple fast travel points to be able to actually get the level 2 weapon assembly line. And it was pretty cheap considering some things in this game. So I cooked up some metal and I spawn trapped my mammoth neighbor. I farmed a pretty good bit of sulfur for some gunpowder. And it was the next day so I spawn trapped my mammoth neighbor again. And then I looked him up on Ancestry.com and proceeded to spawn trap all of his relatives. I also 1v1 this crystal to make some circuit boards. And then I just kind of stuck the weapons production line like right in the middle of my living room. But now I'm out of poly again, so... Yo, 10,000 attack is kind of wild. I've also been grinding a bunch of gunpowder and ingots this whole time, so I've already got like 28 rockets. I gotta test this thing out. Since I'm taking on Frost Stallion though, I decided to set up a roster of all fire type pals for the best chances because this man is a little bit scary. So after like five days of grinding, I headed back to the cold area. And yeah, I basically just threw my fire guy down there to fight while I sat up on this ledge and shot my rockets. Oh, 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 I'm alive. I thought I just imploded right there. So yeah, I just kind of sat up here and his attacks couldn't even reach me. Well, that's what I thought. I, I was wrong. So I came back and this time I sat all the way on the top. And the boss definitely takes extremely reduced damage from these rockets. But they still knock the dude over every time. So it basically prevents me and my pals from being attacked at all. It's not exactly what I intended when I made this thing. But I guess it works out pretty well. 
It worked out so well, in fact, that I accidentally almost killed the dude. And despite this insultingly low capture rate, I managed to purchase myself a new ice maker. And now, I only have three pals left to capture every pal in the game. By the way, these legendaries, they have like an insane passive, just 20% boost to everything. I was actually out of technology points though, so I couldn't even unlock the saddle for the guy. And I'm level 50, so I can't get any more points. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think this through. But anyways, now that I had this guy, I decided to put together a roster to take on Jet Dragon. He's the fastest pal in the game, but he's also a dragon type, meaning my Frost Stallion is gonna have some fun. So I headed over there, and then I got his attention and got out of the way. And Frost Stallion was putting in some work with a bit of explosive support. But then Jet Dragon pulled a big brain play, and he guided my Frost Stallion into the lava. It was quite the icebreaker. So yeah, I just sat there, flabbergasted, and it wasn't long until I was sitting there, deceased. But when I came back, well, this time I went a little too hard and I sent the jet dragon into outer space. Bro literally just left the atmosphere and then died. So on day 112, I tried again because I do have to actually catch him. I perish. No, bro, are you serious? So I tried again. And Frost Stallion got him pretty low, and I was pretty much just using my rockets for self-defense. That way I could stun him anytime he tried to target. But then when Frost Stallion died, I had to finish this fight alone. I would also love to give this guy a try because he's supposed to be the fastest one in the game, but like I said earlier, I don't have any technology points to unlock his saddle. So before attempting the last fight, I wanted to make Relaxaurus's missile launcher, so I hastened the extinction of another village of mammoths. And after making some more legendary spheres, I finally had the most expensive pal equipment in the game. So on day 114, I headed over to the desert to catch the last two pals in my pal deck. Okay, that was epic, and also, that literally didn't do anything. These guys are the hardest overworld bosses in my opinion, just because there's two of them, which is low-key fair, considering there's two of me. But the difference is, these dudes hit so hard that they could just casually kill me as part of their morning routine. Okay, oh my. So yeah, I basically just tried to avoid conflict, and then I gifted them a rocket to the head whenever they looked in my direction. And it actually works pretty well considering how strong my pals are, but it literally only takes one hit for them to kill me. I was pretty determined though, so I decided to try again. And it was pretty clear that I needed more rockets so I could stun lock these guys and avoid taking any big hits. So I grinded away for the next couple hours and I may or may not be sleep deprived at this point. And I also had to make sure that I had enough spears to actually catch these dudes because if I got them low and then I failed to capture them, well, that would just be tragic. And on day 116, I finally headed back over with about 40 rockets in my front right pocket and about 25 legendary spears in the yeah. back left one. And I began my strategy of letting Frost Stallion cook, or whatever ice does. And in the meantime, I fired my rocket propelled grenades at a man's left nostril every time he glanced in my direction. And then for some reason, a bunch of thugs came up behind me, and the one of them that just got finished with his 832 pound max on tricep extensions gunned me down in the middle of the street. Oh my. Why? But luckily, I only wasted a few rockets, so I headed back over, and I saw this man's winding up his kamehameha, so I fired a rocket, but the game didn't register for some reason, and also trees are holographic for some reason. I died in like less than 10 seconds. Like this is insane.
but I wasn't ready to give up just yet, and I had just enough rockets for one last attempt. Oh, that's why I was doing a 1v1. Bro fell asleep in the middle of the fight. Let's go. And just like that, all 111 unique pals have been lawfully employed. That took a lot longer than I thought, and I wanted to have time to do the other tower bosses as well, but it just didn't work out. But if this video does well, I'll do Power World again, and I have a pretty insane challenge that nobody else has done before. So you're going to want to make sure you're subscribed to see that. I hope you guys are all having a great day. And if you want to see me tame every creature and get every achievement on Ark Survival Ascended within 100 days, click right here.